Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Bora. Tomorrow is the day PD2 ladder resets. Uh, I know this is kind of the moment that everybody's been waiting for. I'm super excited to get going. Just the other day I did a video on the best starter builds. Um, a couple of other uh, D2 content creators did very similar things like tier lists and all that. Highly recommend you check that out um, so that you can make sure that you're starting uh, with an optimal build. Um, but one of the comments that I got was uh, that my gear was not early ladder gear. And while I will probably have gear like that day two or three because I'm going to play uh, <laughs> a lot over the next couple of days... Um, I understand that, you know, that gear is an early ladder for everybody. So what I'm going to do today is just talk about the best gear that you can reasonably achieve on day one and two. Um, and really that breaks down into two categories, rune words and crafted items. Um, so before we get going, I uh, just want to call out with respect to rune words, and this is, this is pretty important uh, to understand. Um, for instance, the most important, or sorry, the most, uh, most sought after very early game rune word is stealth. Um, if you've ever watched one of those mega talented speedrunners like Llama or Ryu, you'll notice that they always start out with the stealth rune word. And here's an, here's an important thing to understand uh, when it comes to rune words. This is studded leather. Sorry, my, my loot filter has, has, uh, has blurred it out. But this is studded leather. It has no level requirement. Obviously requires 27 strength, two sockets. Now, when you put the stealth rune word, which is Tau and F, whichever rune has the highest required level is the level requirement of that eventual rune word that you make. So for instance, when we put Tau and F into this armor, we end up with stealth, and now you can see that the required level is 17. Just something to be mindful of um, as you start the ladder. Maybe that was obvious, but uh, but maybe not. So just, just so you don't you know, go to do your first Countess run, put the Tal F in your armor and think that you have stealth, you're not going to be able to use it until level, level 17. So anyway, now we've seen stealth. Let's talk about it. Why are we using stealth? One, we love the fast run walk and, uh, you know, the other early uh, other early mods that it gets. Faster hit recovery, never going to be uh, something bad to have. Faster cast rate for all those caster builds. Dexterity, regen mana, more maximum stamina. stamina. Obviously, you know, th those very early, like until you basically you get to maybe act four, you actually sometimes run into stamina problems. And again, if you watch speedrunners, you'll notice that they actually start the game with a lot of stamina potions. Uh, having to toggle run on and off is pretty annoying. So um, obviously, you know, having the maximum stamina doesn't seem like a super useful mod, but it actually is in the early goings. Poison resist and a couple of other things as well. So stealth is going to be your go-to armor pretty much no matter what build you're playing. If it's a caster, if you're a melee or melee character, um, you're going to want to use stealth um, from the time that you're level 17. Um, next up is a very early rune word is Nadir. And that is Neftir. And again, it's just, you know, you can use this uh, at level 13. It has five strength. Uh, a couple men after each kill. It's just you, basically you're not going to be able to replicate these mods with something that you pick up off the ground uh, at these levels. You know, maybe you find like the odd rare that drops when you're doing a Trist run or something like that. But all told, Nadir is a, is a really safe option and something that, you know, when I get started, uh, Nef and Tier are pretty easy to come by. Um, and again, you, you know, my process and, and a lot of people when they, when they start Act uh, 1 is obviously go to Den of Evil, uh, go save Cain in Tristram. Uh, and then some people do Trist runs, but I personally go uh, straight to Countess and I start doing Countess runs. And at that time, there's a couple of benefits. One, you're looking for the runes. So you're looking for this Nef and Tear. You're looking for the Talonath for your stealth. Two, you're going to get levels. So I do about three or four Countess runs. You'll probably get to level 13 and then you can start moving on. So that's just a, hopefully a little help, helpful tidbit, but these are my two go-to rune words that I use at a very low level. Um, for something a little later in the game, uh, and, and obviously not too late, but you know, the soul rune you can start finding a little later, and I believe that it is the highest rune that you can find from the normal uh, Hellforge quest, 
is lore. And this is kind of what you want to be wearing by the end of the day uh, on the first day or the second day. Plus one all skills. You know, you can find maybe like a like a tarn helm or, you know, something like that if you get really lucky. But otherwise, you're probably going to end up wearing something like lore, which is just a, it's just a great option. 30 lightning resist is really nice as well. Uh, the man after each kill, bit of, bit of a PDR, not percent, but flat PDR. All these things matter in the early goings. Um, so probably by the end of the day, you want to end up wearing something like lore. Um, similarly, for a shield... Shale F equals Rhyme. Rhyme is such a good rune word in the early goings. And it, it, it only requires a two-socket shield, which is awesome. 40% um, faster block rate. 20% chance of blocking. Regen mana. 25 all res. Cannot be frozen. 25 magic find. This is the dream shield uh, for the early goings. Especially if you can have this by the end of uh, day one or two, you're probably going to use it uh, for a little bit just because it is that strong. Um, and uh, like it, you know, everybody likes the MF in the early goings as well, and, and this is definitely a, a pretty solid source uh, of getting MF. Um, for a weapon, you might want to consider uh, a spirit sword, and that is Tal, Fall, or Am. And a lot of these runes, guys, are very easy to get day one. Um, f and, and specifically, if you do the Act 5 quest where you save the barbarians, you get. Uh, you get Tal, Ral, and Ort. You know, so in a lot of situations like that, it'll help you get insight or spirit or uh, anything. You know, any maybe maybe some of these other rune words that I mentioned uh, earlier or later in this video. Uh, but all told, spirit sword is a great option. Uh, it, as you can see, there's you can get up to 35 faster cast rate. Obviously, plus one skills is going to be huge. Vitality, huge mana, which obviously day one is a big problem for most builds, most caster builds. You know, if you're a fireball source, you really find that you can't be spamming all the time. So getting, you know, this has the top end of 82 mana, super important. Um, they've actually just added this requirements minus 25, which is super nice. Um, you can also make spirit in a shield and it does offer a ton of resist. Um, Obviously, that same faster hit recovery that you get on the weapon, the same plus skills, more faster cast rate. The only problem with Spirit as a shield is that the only... So, for non-Paladins, the 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 uh, four open socket shield with the least strength requirement is a Monarch, which has 156 strength requirement. Um, so, even with minus 25%, a spirit monarch still requires quite a bit of strength. It's obviously with the um, with the uh, with the minus twenty five requirements. It's a huge huge discount on the amount of strength you need, and it's really nice. Um, you do need uh, one hundred and seventeen strength, which is still a lot uh, in the early goings because you really because your resists are bad, your gear is bad. You really want as many points in vitality as you can possibly get. So I don't necessarily recommend Spirit Shield unless you're a Paladin and then you can find something with much lower requirements that has four open sockets um, and it makes Spirit Shield much more viable. Um, so these are kind of like the very early game and I'll just call this one out because this is very early but uh, for a specific build, um, if you're playing any fire skill uh, build, then Leaf is a great option, you can see. And one of the cool things about these rune words, right, if the white base that you have has plus skills, those will stay on the rune word when you roll the rune word. So this one had, uh, I believe, Fireball and uh, Telekinesis on it or something like that. I've added the rune word. Those stay on it. And all told, this is a you know fantastic uh, early... Uh, weapon for any fire build and only requires level 19 so you're going to be able to use this in the very early goings um next up for a little bit later in the day um you know lum rune is something that you're probably well you're definitely not going to find until nightmare um again when you do your nightmare hellforge uh i can't remember what the off the top of my head i can't re remember what the what the best uh rune that you can find is but it's going to be kind of in this area. Like you're really not going to find anything much better than a lum. However, naf lum equals smoke. 
Look how great this armor is. Uh, you can get up to 45 resistance with the faster hit recovery, 10 energy. I mean, obviously the resistance is the, is the big thing here. Um, so as you, you know, you need the resist a lot more as you go into Nightmare and Hell. Of course, you get the, the resist penalty of 50 resist when you go into Nightmare and 100 when you go into Hell. So this 42 makes up a good chunk of that. Of course, you're not going to have a Torch and an Annie. Um, so you are really looking for these uh, opportunities to get better resist. And Smoke is a nice, easy rune word for you to make. Again, maybe you won't find a Lum, but maybe you will. And if you do, this is probably the best use of it uh, early ladder. Uh, next, this is a great one, but this is uh, Lionheart. So again, this is, if you can get Hell, Lum, and Foul day one or two, this is uh, obviously an upgrade from Smoke. You'll see that it still has pretty meaningful resists. It also has 50 life, which is super nice. Look at the plus strength, plus dex, plus vitality. All of those are so so huge for you in the early goings. I uh, can't say enough about Lionheart as a good... This is probably more of a day two type armor. Uh, unless you get really lucky. But finding a foul rune, uh, it might be a little bit more challenging. And, and the, the required level uh, for this is level 41. So of course this is going to be a bit of more of a mid-game, uh, either late nightmare or early hell type armor uh, that you're going to use. Um, but a great one nonetheless. Now this is... Uh, piece it's a it's a amazon only armor uh but it's so good and so each class has its own version of peace there's a there's a druid uh there's an armor that has plus two to druid skills with other mods now peace is probably the most realistic one because look at the runes that are in it shale fall am they're all very low runes you're going to be able to find them day one for sure the level requirements only level 29, whereas the others are going to be much higher. Uh, still recommend that you look up the uh, the version of this for your own class. Again, I can always refer you guys to Ariat Summit. It is a wealth of information. Or, of course, you can use the PD2 Wiki. Um, this would fall under the category of uh, the 1.11 rune words. So it's the newest set of rune words. And literally all, all they did was come out with an armor for each class. Um, like, but just to put it into perspective, the Necromancer uh, armor uses two ums. The Sorceress armor uses one Paul. Uh, the Barb one is actually pretty low as well, so maybe you want to consider that. But all told, look at those ones yourselves. Peace is probably the best one, especially because of the uh, the runes are low, the requirements are low, and look at the look at the skills there or, or look at the mods. Sorry. Um, they're just great. So if you're playing a Javazon, this is going to be your go-to armor for day one or two. Um, and yeah, yeah, you're going to probably wear this for, for quite a while. Next up is Insight. Insight is obviously a huge boost. Now, not only is this going to give your mercenary uh, a lot of uh, a lot of damage, and you can see that this obviously has some, some pretty high strength and dex requirements. Of course, um, you're going to use whatever you know, whatever four open socket pole arm that you find um, uh, to build this. But uh, maybe you can find something with a little less of a strength and dex, re dex requirement. I don't even know that at this level, at level 27, that your mercenary, obviously an Act 2 mercenary, would be able to wear this. But all told, as soon as you can equip Insight, you're going to want to do it. The big reason why is the Meditation Aura. So Meditation Aura obviously uh, for your for you and your entire party has massive mana gain. Uh, in fact, we can look at the skill because I'm on a pally right now. Uh, meditation. So this is uh, mana after each kill. And um, the aura just increases mana recovery for you and your party. This one has level 15. It can get up to level 17. And that, again, for a caster, you're going to be able to really start spamming your skills a lot more. If you are that brave soul who's teleporting for your party in day one or two, you're going to want the insight. Because it's very, like, teleport takes up huge mana, um, you know, and your mana pool is so small. But once you get insight on, you're going to be able to find that uh, teleporting is much, much more realistic. And obviously, this is going to be a go-to. Um, for you melee players out there, this is Malice. Now, Malice has 100% chance of open wounds. 
got a bit of uh, ED, some max damage, minus target defense. All of these things uh, are fantastic uh, for the early going. Now, I've used a flail here. Flail has a very fast attack speed. Um, so despite the fact that the rune word gives you no increased attack speed, you're still going to be able to swing very fast. That 100% chance of open wounds is super nice. Um, so when you start, you know, those those boss fights, this is kind of going to be, you know, a lot of like barbarians use double swing. So maybe this would be one of your uh, weapons. And this is a neat little trick. And again, if you've watched a couple of uh, a couple of the speedrunners, you'll find that they actually just use a two socket flail with Tau Tau in it. And Tau just gives poison damage. So if you can use a Tau Tau, and so here you go, 75 poison damage over five seconds. If you use one flail with Tau Tau, and then you use a Malice on the other hand, that's gonna be a pretty good setup. You're definitely going to be able to get through uh, normal with like a double swing Barbarian with that setup. Um, there are some other uh, decent um, low level rune words for melee characters. I'm not going to explore too many of them today, even for um, for those brave souls that are going to start with Bozon, which is a historically very hard character to start with. Uh, there's Zephyr and there's Harmony. Um, so there's there's a couple of rune words that you can use there as well. Um, but all told, um, for those melee players, you might want to use uh, Malice. Um, last but not least, uh, Rao or Tau. This gives us Ancient's Pledge. Of course, this is not a Paladin only rune word. Um, again, for shields with three open sockets, you're looking at higher level requirements. You're looking at, um, uh, higher strength requirements, but all told, it's still something that you can definitely achieve on day one. Ancient's Pledge, the resists are massive. That's obviously the huge draw to this rune word. Uh, and you know, if, if you don't, if you feel that, uh, you simply cannot survive using a rhyme shield or something like that, which you know has has resistance on uh, on its own, but obviously not to this extent. We're almost at uh, almost at sixty per, uh, and you know this is just going to be a super great uh, early option. And again, if you do that barbarian quest to free the barbarians, you're going to get all three of these runes, and you can just plop them into a shield, and there you go. You have ancient's pledge, and you're rocking. Uh, massive resists, especially as you go into Nightmare. So that covers off the early rune words. Guys, don't get me wrong. There are other good rune words for early going. Uh, wealth, for instance, is is a, is a pretty good one. I believe that is Lemco tier. So again, I tried to avoid uh, some of those rune words that require those. You're probably not going to find a day one. You might not even find a day two. So I didn't include that, but Wealth is another great one, has huge MF on it as well. So uh, definitely encourage you guys to, again, go to PD2 Wiki or to Ariat Summit. Look at the rune words. Obviously, PD2 has made some changes to the rune words, so it probably makes more sense that you look it up on the PD2 Wiki. Let's get into crafting. Now, they've done some really, really cool stuff uh, with crafting. And basically, um, for like blood weapons, for instance, it used to have to be a certain type of weapon. Now you can use anything. So I've, I've brought up some hatchets, for instance, uh, whereas it used to be, you know, axes only or swords only or something like that. So, so now you can use whatever weapon base you want, as long as it's magic, again, magic being the blue one, uh, you can craft. And so they've done that, um, with, with all of their crafting. And what the cool thing that they've done is you can actually upgrade those crafted rune words. So if you do craft, uh, for instance, you know, a safety armor and you craft it in uh, quilted armor, you can then upgrade that to ghost armor and upgrade it again to dust shroud if you really want to. Again, that there's a rune investment in that, of course, so it would have to be a pretty sweet role for you to want to do that. But maybe with these, you know, with these weapons, Maybe you can get away with a hatchet in normal, uh, but you can't in nightmare. So just upgrade it and you'll get, you know, that your, your base will become exceptional. Any ED on the weapon will apply against that exceptional weapon uh, base damage. And you're going to be obviously in a much uh, better spot. So um, with crafting and early game crafting specifically, uh, and of course for the, for the, um, uh, for the caster weapons and all that kind of stuff, just start low because 
certain mods will spawn on these weapons so you you can't actually predict what the um uh, what the required level is going to be um but for instance if you're if you're a sorceress and you just want those base mods that come on a uh that come on a crafter or sorry a caster craft weapon and i'll show you what that looks like right now so plus one skills and 10 to 20 faster cast rate this comes on every single uh on on every single crafted uh caster weapon that you make and so again it's a it's a good alternative um spirit still is pretty desirable to me um but i think it's worth you know you know you're gonna pick up a couple of p gems uh while you go for these first couple of days i think it's worth just giving it a go with some of the crafting now this one because of the mods that it rolled uh it actually requires level 49 I've already done I've done some other crafting where it came out with like a level 24 uh, requirement. So it is a bit of a crapshoot. Maybe I'll uh, sorry, I don't know. maybe I'll craft one more just to see if I can get uh, <clears throat> something with uh, with a little lower of a requirement. So again, uh, in the cube we're going uh, tier jewel piami. And let's hope for, so this requires level 86. Now, if you look at all the mods that are on it, obviously, Thunderstorm, Energy Shield, that fire damage is obscene for whatever reason, plus two to lightning. Because of the mods, we rolled a craft that obviously has a pretty obscene uh, level requirement. So, I mean, that's obviously the risk when you craft at these early levels, which is kind of why Spirit sword was so high on my list in terms of this is probably something that you should be chasing uh day one so that is a caster weapon and guys like the roll can be so good like even this one like plus two hydra 48 mana 16 faster caster this is a pretty good uh weapon definitely something that you can use the you know back half of day one or day two depending on of course how much you play um for people like that have a structured reset group like me our, our goal is to finish the day at level 80 so i'd be able to wear something like this but understand that is not everybody's play style um anyway something to keep your eye out for next the safety armor uh this is a uh, rune, any jewel uh again just well actually just, yeah any jewel and uh, perfect emerald this one got two sockets pretty cool but the big uh mod on this one the enhanced defense is a guaranteed mod, but the really cool one is the physical damage taken uh, as a percentage. And I could have sworn that they changed it. I'm just gonna look at my at my notes quickly because I'm. I think it was supposed to be between 10 and 20. If I'm not mistaken, it is. So interesting that this one spawned five. Uh, maybe I'll report that one to uh, uh, to our boy Senpai, but. Uh, the PDR. So if you're playing a me melee build uh, day one and you're, you know, frontlining, you're going to want one of these crafted armors because the PDR, like PDR is a mod that you don't get on many things. And it's usually the way more advanced items like Storm Shield, Verdungos, Vamp Gaze, uh, Crown of Ages, like Shaft Stop. Those things have uh, PDR as a percentage. Whereas if you just saw what that rune investment was, and again, uh, just to reiterate, that was uh, an Eth rune and a jewel and a perfect emerald. Like Eth rune, you know that you're gonna find an Eth rune on day one, no matter what. Um, so this is gonna be a viable option for pretty much anybody to craft. And again, highly recommend it uh, for those melee characters or, or anyone that is frontlining. Uh, next, a caster shield. Uh, and again, while I do love uh, Rhyme and I do like Spirit, uh, this one is, obviously you can see that the strength requirement for this is only 53. So again, it was 117 was going to be the strength requirement for uh, for using Spirit Shield. This has huge faster cast rate on it as well. This spawns some resist on it, not a guaranteed mod. Uh, but all told, you can craft something pretty neat like this. Uh, especially if you're, you know, if you're the telesource and, and you want that faster cast rate, 
uh, which is what tele sources thrive on, then you're going to want to do you know one of these uh, caster shields. To be honest, the entire caster uh, craft pack is amazing, and so this one got 23 faster cast rate. The mods on it, outside of that, aren't so great. Required level 43, required strength 53, uh, just like the other one. So again, these things highly vary, but it's just worth the risk. I mean, there's the, and when I say risk, it's like, what are you losing? You know, like, okay, I'm going to do a blood weapon and I'm going to lose an ort rune. Like, it's not, uh, it's not prohibitive, the, the cost of, of crafting these things. So certainly um, explore the entire gamut of caster so you obviously you can do helm boot gloves belt shield body amulet ring um in in a lot of those cases especially the amulets and the rings which are guaranteed to spawn faster cast rate as are the gloves now as are as is the belt the belt used to have a a, a range of the of the faster cast rate and now it's um uh i believe it always gets uh 10 uh and sorry, I just realized that when I read off that. Uh, so the caster shield, yeah, Ethrune. So yeah, now all belts, they used to range between 5 and 10. Now it's straight up 10. So again, if you're looking for faster cast rate, definitely recommend looking at the uh, caster items that you can craft. They're, they're all pretty good. Uh, and lastly, we're just going to look at one of these blood weapons. So they've now added uh, enhanced damage as a guaranteed mod, which uh, was not the case before uh blood weapons so or sorry it, it used to have 35 to 60 ed as a guaranteed mod now it has 55 to 80 it also used to have one to four percent life stolen as a guaranteed mod they've changed that to three to six which is a big upgrade uh and it still has between 20 10 and 20 life as you can see this one got uh, a secondary mod of of additional enhanced damage which is very nice and you know 33 uh, 33 to 67 damage is pretty decent. Super low requirements, 20 dex, 20 strength, 43 level. Um, so that's a, a pretty good one. We'll just craft one more uh, just for the sake of it. This one in an ethereal base. Uh, and so again, I mean, this one does pretty nice damage. This one does require level 72 because some of the mods that spawned on it. Um, but all told, you know, 20 increased attack speed is pretty nice. Obviously the ED, attack rating. These blood weapons can be pretty solid. So if you're looking to play a melee class, highly recommend you look at uh, the blood uh, craft tree. And I know some of my friends have done testing and they literally decked out their entire mercenary in all blood stuff. Blood helmet, blood weapon, blood armor, blood belt, blood gloves, blood boots. And their mercenary was seemingly unkillable. So... Uh, again, for the investment and, you know, blood, blood stuff, uh, like the, the rune requirement, you know, rouse, eths, nefs, towels, like the highest one is soul. So you're going to be able to craft all this stuff pretty, pretty early on. Uh, highly recommend, you know, if you're struggling for, to keep your mercenary alive or, you know, if you want to use, uh, like insight on your mercenary, but you're, you know, you're struggling to fill out the rest of his gear definitely consider uh doing the the blood crafting uh all that life leech is just going to serve your mercenary very well a lot of this stuff uh everything it has a guaranteed life mod on it as well anywhere between 20, 10 and 20 life um so yeah and like i said most of this stuff got buffs for season two uh usually they raised both the floor and the ceiling of how much life leech um is going to spawn as a guaranteed mod so definitely recommend checking that out. So I'm going to sign off here. Uh, I've been, you know, this is my, my standard length of videos. I'm glad that I was able to get it done in this amount of time. Um, just a couple comments, guys. If there's something that you feel just needs to be brought to the attention of, of people watching this video, other rune words, other like just must have crafts, please put it in the comments below and uh, I definitely can pin some of those messages. Uh, and as always, guys, if you do like my content, please feel to like and subscribe. I'm just going to be doing a ton more content uh, as Season 2 kicks off. I will be streaming on Twitch um, pretty much full-time over the next week because I am part of, uh, a part of a group that is going to be racing for 99. Maybe not you know, going for number one, but certainly a lot of uh, people in my group want to be top 10. So I'm going to be streaming a lot 
This is Bora Guys signing off. Uh, if you want to chat with me on Discord, B-O-R-A, hashtag 7700. And I'll see you guys next video.